And also, when I found out I couldn't do it, I was like, well, fuck college. The only reason why I went to school. Like in eighth grade, I. What? I'm now recording this. All right, go ahead. <laughs> why don't you. Uh, we don't have well, to talk why don't we that. start over again? And I'm going to have you talk a little bit about what happened. Um, the question is, what did you do once you finished your sports career in college? Um, so you were talking about oh, um, you injured yourself and then go from there. And then I, uh, once I was done running, I decided to try and run um, professionally with Tucson Elite Athletic Club. And I did that in Tucson up until 96 when I moved back up to Mesa. And I continued to run, but I also, at the same time, coached at Mesa Community College in their weight room and also on the track, helping the sprinters. Um, and then I started teaching piano in 96, too. So in addition to running. OK, nothing wrong with that. So I taught, yeah, I taught piano from, uh, gosh, 96 to, I want to say, I taught for 12 years, so, and. I'll talk a little bit about, um, you, you were telling me about your experience um, trying to get into the Marine Corps, so kind of tell me that again, you know, since you were a child, you wanted to. Um, you wanted to be a fighter pilot? I uh, yeah, I wanted to be a fighter pilot. I wanted to fly jets in second grade. Initially, I thought I was Air Force, but I chose Marine Corps. And I went to Marine Officer School. I uh, graduated there, and right before my uh, supposed to commission, my found out that my vision was too bad. So I eventually ended up getting out and not doing it. So I decided to run track and focus on that. Mm -hmm. So that was a, uh, to say that was a disappointment was an understatement. How did you get through that? <laughs> um, just focusing on running. Sorry, I just want to say a lot of whiskey, but anyways. Um, <laughs> sorry. You're gonna, I got through it just focusing on running new phase. Let's just do that. Okay. So you ended up uh, coming back into Mesa in, uh, what did you say, 96? 96, I moved back up. And I, yeah, I coached for, I helped coach at Mesa Community College. Uh, my focus when I was at MCC is athletes who had issues with, I, I would teach Olympic lifts, the clean, jerk, and snatch. And I would also, work with athletes who had problems learning drills, I would focus on that and I would also teach the athletes how to come out of the blocks and also relays, so I did a couple things. Mm -hmm. The head coach was the one who designed the majority of the training programs and if there was somebody with an issue, then I would work with them. How did you like doing that? It was fun. I loved it. Coaching was a lot of fun. Um, Coming from, it was hard coming from uh, University of Arizona or coming from a Division I school where you have all these resources and you have, yeah, you have all these resources and coming to community college where you don't necessarily have all the resources because they're, at that point they were just finishing up building a track so they went all these years without a track at their stadium. They would have to go to, I think, McClintock High School to train. So that was the biggest change. And then also at U of A, you would have people, the majority of the athletes training with us were on scholarship, lucky enough to be on scholarship. I was lucky enough to be on scholarship. Um, and at MCC, they don't have a whole lot of scholarships. So a lot of those athletes would have to work and do other things because they were going to school, that was their focus. So they weren't able to uh, you know, spend all their time training or being as focused with us. Mm -hmm. so that, those are the biggest changes. But it was, it was a lot of fun. You learn a lot about 
coaching when you actually have to do it yourself and you're not just an apprentice. Because mm -hmm. from 93 to when I moved up in 96, I also was kind of an apprentice to uh, Coach Harvey. So soaking it all in. Mm -hmm. So in 2001, you had an um, occupational change. Can you tell me a little bit about that? <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, when I uh, decided to test for the police department. I tested for Phoenix initially. That didn't work. My first choice was L.A., but their pay scale was horrible. It still is horrible. That's probably why they're so understaffed. Um, I, I had a friend who, I had a bunch of friends who worked Phoenix. I went on some ride-alongs with them. And as soon as I, you know, walked in the precinct, I realized this is what I wanted to do. And the ride-alongs were quite a bit of fun. I'd known those guys at U of A. And it didn't work out testing with Phoenix, so I ended up, I had a friend from high school that was uh, a cop here in Chandler. So I tested with Chandler. and. They hired me, and I've been here ever since. So. Okay. Um, was there anything from your um, days of running track, you know, and some of the things that you learned there through that experience that you applied toward your career? Yes. Uh, keeping a good fitness level helped me get through the academy. Um, that in officer school made the academy really easy, but. I'd say it helped in patrol, but I'm also one of the snipers on the SWAT team, or as they call it, SAU, Special Assignment Unit. Uh, being a sniper, that's the biggest thing that I've taken from uh, being under Coach Harvey, his methodical approach to training. Um, everything you do has a reason. Just that being systematic and methodical about everything directly applies to being systematic and methodical about being a sniper. We record everything just like we did at U of A. Um, just that approach to training and that razor sharp focus uh, directly applies to being a sniper. It applies to patrol, but you have, you're doing a whole lot more multitasking than say uh, being a sniper on a SWAT team. So that has a di direct uh, there's a direct correlation. Okay. Are you married? Yes. Okay, what's, who's your wife? Jennifer, Jennifer Olivier. I met her at college, I met her at U of A. Mm -hmm. My, uh, you wanna go into that or? Oh, sorry, like, yeah, yeah, that's, sorry. <laughs> I met my wife at uh, U of A my junior year. It was her sophomore year. I kept, um, I met her at a party. I was actually one of the people who was babysitting that night or keeping my friends kind of, making sure they didn't do anything too bad. And I met her at a party. Uh, and then I kept seeing her at a Newman Center, it's a Catholic church on campus. I kept seeing her there and I kept seeing her on campus and ended up, um, asked her out on a date, which for her was not a date, it was just going, out to eat with somebody and I thought it was a date. She absolutely had no interest in me whatsoever. Story of my life. And we remained uh, we remained friends throughout college. Every time I'd see her on campus I was always you know, nice to her and stuff. I mean I was nice to everybody but uh, and then she graduated and I saw her right before she graduated. Since so she spent a year in England and then when she came back from England, I was still in Tucson. And that's when we started dating. That's when she came back in England. Mm -hmm. Came back from England. So. When did you get married? We got married in 06. We were dating and living together all through that period of time until, I was the one I actually wanted to get married. She didn't want to get married. So, I think she put that in. But anyways. Um, yeah, she was not interested. It took five years of the Jedi mind trick to get her interested in me. So. <laughs> so do you have any children? Yes, Andy, Andal and Clara. Um, she's two and a half now. We have one kid. And the name, uh, the first name, Andalyn or Andy, is one of, Jennifer was a teacher for years. And one of her favorite students 
or she loved the name, was Andy, Andalyn. And then one of my favorite students, I had a bunch of favorite students, but it was Clara. And I asked, Clara was actually, I think she was, I want to say she was 12 at the time when I asked her, but uh, it's probably older than that. And I asked Clara if I could use her name for the middle name, and she was all happy. So yeah, that's how we got the first two names. Great. Um, so given, given the experiences that you've had, you know, kind of excelling in athletics and really um, learning about how to be focused and driven, what advice would you pass on to your daughter? Given all your previous experience in athletics, is there anything that you would take from that that you would pass on to your daughter? If you're going to do something, go all out. Um, you know, when she's younger, I hope she does. I hope she tries to experience all sports and different things because I play piano too. And but once you decide to focus on something, when you get a bit older, then focus on it. And be focused to the point where we're almost obsessed. If you're going to do it, go all out and focus on it. So that's what I tell her. I get the feeling she's probably going to be like that if she's anything like the two of us. Okay. So, and last question is what does it mean to you to be inducted into the Chandler Sports Hall of Fame? I think it's really cool. It's a nice, pleasant surprise. I haven't done, you know, I haven't run. Gosh, it's a very, it's, it's a pleasant surprise. Last time I ran for Seton was in 88. Last time I ran for U of A was in 91, so that was a while ago. It's, it's nice to be able to go back and think about and relive those times. Because those are, those are some good times. Some of the stuff I can't talk about on camera, but they're good times nonetheless. It's nice to go back. So, kind of puts a perspective on things. Okay. Give it my job now. Okay. Who, who recommended you for the House Sports Hall of Fame? Do you know? It was um, Dennis Clinch. Who's Dennis Clinch? He's the AD, athletic director for Seton. I think he still is the AD for Seton, isn't he? I think so. What was it like when you told your family that you were going to be inducted into? The sports hall of fame is wife thought it was cool oh sorry wife was happy she's she was uh, surprised and very happy so good all right good. Good. excellent you know, it actually you guys weren't friends it didn't take you that that amount of time for you to jedi mind trick her you know really made it took that much time for her to train you to be the right man that she wants to marry that's, you know, that's, the truth. that's probably it. That's probably <laughs> it. Jedi mind train. You will take me. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, I haven't it's usually they're secretly training you and you're thinking, like, oh, I got this unlocked. Sure. This is. I did? I only curse once, my squad's gonna be shocked. Yeah, we don't, we wouldn't. He's hilarious. How do you feel about the sports hall of fame? It's fucking awesome! That's what it's been awesome.